Hello everybody, my name is Baru and today we're going to be discussing the 1.0.4 patch for Dead by Daylight. If you don't know what this patch did, allow me to give you the quick and dirty here. Most, if not all, of the infinite juke spots which allow you to run away from the killer indefinitely have been removed from the game in one form or another. Now, you might think that this is a change that everyone would welcome and say, hey, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The killer should not be, you know, defenseless against this kind of maneuver. But as it stands, a lot of people are in a little bit of an uproar. Some with valid points, some with not so valid points. So I figured I'd give my two cents on the whole thing. Now, before we go over that, before the patch, the general strategy for Dead by Daylight was to find the killer, find your infinite juke spot, and then get his attention. Maybe not in that order, but either way, you wanted the killer to find you. Why? Because you would get a ton of boldness points, as well as wasting the killer's time. The killer would not be able to kill you outside of human error. It's simply as easy as pressing a button and going over a certain wall over and over again. This would even cause griefing by certain survivors as they would stay in the game until the killer basically rage quit because he couldn't actually kill somebody. I've had games go on for an extra 30 minutes because I cannot kill them, but they eventually slip up. The general idea that infinites were balanced by certain people is just a crazy, crazy talk. But that said, with the new patch, you now no longer want to be found by the, by the killer, which is how it should be. You shouldn't feel safe. Now, there are some issues inside of this game that do need to be addressed because of the fact that the killer is now much stronger. And this is gonna be going around a few perks as well as some gameplay mechanics. So let's go ahead and go over a couple of the changes that I would like to see. Number one is going to be going over no one escapes death. I won't lie. I use this perk and I have no shame before the patch rather. If you don't know what no one escapes death does at ranks one and two, you will be able to swing more often and you will be able to move faster once the gates have been powered. However, at rank 3, this perk goes from shit tier to god tier, as it will allow you to one-shot any survivor, regardless of how much health they have. If they're in a wounded state or in a healthy state, they'll just fall flat on their ass. That, coupled with the fact that survivors can no longer infinitely juke, and the fact that you have increased movement speed, makes this perk a little too powerful. Honestly. I would like to see its rank 3 ability changed from the fact that it decreases, you know, I don't like the fact that you can one-shot survivor. I would like it to have increased movement speed at rank 3. Say going up to 12, maybe even 15%. The ability to one-shot is just simply too powerful and goes against so many things. In most games, perks are supposed to supplement and help the gameplay not completely and utterly destroy mechanics. The idea of healing and altruism is basically thrown out the window the moment that the gate is powered. And this is just a little too much in my mind. I would like to see some changes to this. There's also a couple of things going over our good old friend, the hook. Now, as you all know, killers camp the hell out of hooks that's just how it is they will find a hook they will find the player and they will sit there they'll pitch their tent and they will not move no matter how much people will try and stop them now granted staying near the hook is a very valid strategy it is and honestly if there are two bodies next to there i'll stay that's only one of the few instances that I usually stay near a hook. If I have someone on the ground and someone on a hook, I'll end up staying there until one of them dies and then I'll move on. So I don't really hold it against people who camp once you have two kills. You want to guarantee one of those kills, period. That's just how the game is played. 
but a lot of people will get this one kill and they'll sit on the hook and they'll sit there for the full minute and a half that it takes to bleed out now how exactly can we do what what exactly can be done to alleviate this devs have already stated that hook camping is a valid strategy and that you are supposed to just punish the killer by getting generators online if it takes a minute and a half to bleed out on a hook and it takes 50 seconds to get a generator online you would think with three people you would be able to get three generators online because the killer was camping a hook so that is something that needs to be said you can very much punish killers for camping a hook and honestly it's how it should be done but i feel like there needs to be a little bit of a change here number one survivors who are on the hook feel very i guess shafted would be the word once you're on that hook you are completely screwed you are probably not going to rank up and there is absolutely nothing you are going to get for staying on that hook what is the point of struggling in front of a killer who is camping you the player are going to get no benefit out of struggling on that hook the killer is going to get his points and you unfortunately are not now that said there's one simple change that i would like to see made into this game and that's called distraction points once the killer has put someone on a hook that person on the hook should get altruism points called distraction and they would get these points for simply objectives getting completed i'd say about 250 to 300 points maybe even 500 i would be able to go so high as that as well every single time that a generator gets turned online a hook gets disarmed a trap gets sabotaged the person on the hook will get some points that way they have a reason to hold on to their life they're helping their team even if the killer does not decide to run away and that i feel would make it a little bit better on the survivor side so they don't feel as shafted and as screwed over by that now there's also one other change that i would like to make to the killer as well the fact that he can get one kill and he can rank up is in my mind a little dumb and i know this change may not necessarily be taken in the right way but honestly i would like to see the killer have to get at least two kills in order to rank up now the reason i say that this change needs to be made is simply because you can rank up without actually getting a kill which in my mind as a killer doesn't make much sense i'm okay with survivors ranking up even if they don't survive why because ranking up and surviving is a team effort the idea that one player can determine the outcome of an entire match in a 4v1 game is a little ridiculous you were supposed to beat the killer via a team you can't stick around you know you, you or rather you can't you can't just spread out you have to work together so what i would like to see is a minimum of two kills required for the killer to actually rank up also this would get rid of a lot of the friendly killers i got it i'm just gonna go ahead and on a little bit of a tangent here i'm not really that big of a fan of the friendly killer wraith ding dong let's all be friends and get blood points together because that ruins the whole point of the game it's a survival horror game not let's hold hands and be friends with each other with that said that's pretty much my thoughts on the new patch and some quality of life changes that i think would go a long way to making it so survivors feel a little bit better about the fact that you know it's now more difficult to survive and you know the killers aren't given basically free wins because it is much easier to get 10,000 points in two different categories now now that you can get your now that you can actually secure your kills without the fact without have, without the worry of an infinite juke it is significantly easier 
and it's definitely something that I think has gone in the right direction. There are some changes that need to be made to this game, but overall, things are looking well for Dead by Daylight. And, you know, I think that's pretty much everything that I have wanted to kind of go over. There are a few outstanding issues inside of the game. There are a lot of common perks because you know what? Let's actually keep this discussion going just a little bit longer. There are a lot of perks in this game that are just completely ignored. Why? Because saboteur, self-heal, sprint burst and spine chill. Is there anything wrong with these perks? Not really. Honestly, I don't feel that bad about these perks being here. They were overpowered when they first came out, but have since got nerfed and it's not really that bad. I wouldn't want to nerf these perks any more for the survivors because they don't really need to be. Self heal takes so long now. And because of the fact that you can't infinitely juke, you only use self heal in between. Once you've actually hidden from the killer, can you get a self heal off? Which is in my mind, how it should work. If you are being chased, you're not going to be able to get a heal off. And that's how it should be. And naturally, I think Saboteur is honestly balanced. Because of the fact that you are wasting so much time when you are sabotaging everything. As a killer myself, I run Iron Grip rank 3. Which, that's a whole nother discussion. But the fact that you're wasting time destroying all of the hooks. Which could be spent getting generators online. Makes my job infinitely easier you're giving me extra minutes of work and in dead by daylight you need to be constantly getting generators online i'll eventually be coming out with a guide on surviving dead by daylight but the number one tip that i can give you is always be doing something to get the game to end you want to keep getting those generators online if you have any additional seconds Getting rid of hooks in my mind is just for point farming and it kind of hurts your team. Sprint burst, it's pretty standard. You run fast and afterwards you don't run so fast. And 40 seconds now that the cooldown is that long, killer can catch up to you before your sprint burst is back up. So there's a lot of overpowered perks in this game. They're very strong. What do you do about that? Do we nerf them? Not really because they're not that bad. What we need to do is give more of a reason to use other perks and, ver and you know, just diversify these builds. Because as of right now, it's use these three perks, four perks, keep it as that, don't change it up ever. You have no reason to use any of the other perks. For example, Plunderer's Chest or something like that. The one that lets you see chests. It's like, boy... That sure is convenient, being able to see chests. Things that I would like to see change with those perks is maybe make it so that way if you have rank 3 of the chest find, you have a very high chance of maybe finding a skeleton key. Or rather, an increased chance of finding a skeleton key. Or maybe even finding items that already have quality attachments on them. Finding a toolbox that has a, a wire spool and a hacksaw just there why because you're running rank three of that you know of that perk and that will make items better that will give you a reason to use shitty perks that have no reason to be in the game prove thyself could be a little bit stronger leader could be a little bit stronger they need to buff some of the shittier perks rather than us constantly go over how strong the other perks are because the reason that we see them as so strong is because there's no other option what are you going to do exactly? Why would I use the other perks? The exam the, the, the reason is I wouldn't, period. I have no reason to use these perks at all. So that's what I would like to see changed inside of the game. We need to make it so that way the people who are on the hook have a little bit of a reason, you know, to keep struggling for their life. We need to make it so that way the killer isn't basically given a free win anymore he should have to work for those high ranks and you know move 
the boosting lobbies because they're dumb. And maybe make some of the other perks a little bit better. There's a lot of changes that could definitely go into Dead by Daylight. But honestly, I don't think some of them need to be made because a lot of people overcomplicate shit. And that's one thing that I've always said on my stream. When making changes, don't overcomplicate shit. Like when originally the infinite juke was coming out, there were thousands of different suggestions. Like what if you jump over a window and there's an X percent chance and there's a stamina bar and all this other systems. It's just like, don't make it complicated, man. Just change the map so that way you can't do it anymore. That's, that's all that needs to be done. Keep it simple is what I've always said. Just it's easier from a development cycle to do simple changes. And honestly, there are still a few issues there are still a few issues with the game that need to you know be alleviated a little bit but you know it's fine it's definitely a lot in a much better state this game is not full release period there are so many bugs and glitches that it is honestly mind-boggling it's gotten this far as a full release game but i love it to death and i can't stop playing it so yeah i think now that that is everything else that i've been go that i've wanted to go over and just so you know i hope you all have been enjoying this gameplay this is some some high rank survivors versus high rank killer and i think it's a perfect example of this game right now it's difficult for you to survive right now and i like that you have to work as a team for a chance they had a very strong start in this game and then we're just thrown out and one strategy you're going to see me doing here is i'm going to throw someone in the middle of a cornfield and there's a reason that i'm doing that it's because they have a low bleed out bar right now and the reason i'm throwing them in the middle here is because they have two options they can either hold to recover and hope that their teammate comes to them or they can crawl towards their teammate and this is something that i'll always do when there's two people left and i don't want them to take a hatch i want them to try and sell out their last teammate and as you can see it ends up working but overall thank you so very much for watching Leave a comment in the comment section below about your thoughts on Dead by Daylight, the current patch, and things that we have discussed here. I love playing this game and I love streaming it, and I'd like to see it continue to grow and improve. This will be a little bit of a rough spot as a lot of killers will now be, you know, cropping up, but it'll also let a lot of the good survivors start to shine. So thank you so very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the discussion, please do me a favor, hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate that. And I will catch you all in the next one, everybody. Later. I'm also going to let the gameplay just kind of finish out there. So I'll do that thing. But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next one, everybody. Peace.